Hello, this is Paul Bamberg speaking. Originally, I planned to get everyone together from Math 23B, 23C, E23B, and E23C, either by live attendance, live streaming, or video, to share this information with you about who should take which of the two courses. But now I discover that the large lecture hall in which the course was placed doesn't permit live streaming, so I've moved into a considerably smaller room, and I figure the right thing is to reach Math 23C as a live audience, and the rest of you either by streaming or by this video. So let me talk for a while about the subject matter of the two courses, and then about the way in which they are run, and you can decide for yourself which of these two sources is right for you. Math 23b is going to cover the last half of the textbook you were using for Math 23a, and if you're saying, Math 23a, what's that? What's in the first three chapters? 23b is probably the wrong course for you because I plan to rely heavily on Math 23a. I was brought up a physicist, 23B, in my opinion, is ideal preparation for someone who's going into physics and a very good choice for someone who's thinking of concentrating in math. In particular, if you concentrate in math, you need to go on in real analysis, and you're post supposed to skip the easiest of those courses, Math 112, and take a higher numbered one. If you take an electromagnetic theory course after 23B, you will be extremely well prepared. And if you want to go into Math 132, which is smooth manifolds, you'll know more than people who had taken any other introductory math course. 23C is quite different. It was, in fact, inspired by a presentation I heard at the faculty council about the Harvard master's program in data science, and I thought, hmm, it would be worth putting together a course that will prepare people for that. I've also had the experience of teaching Computer Science 20 once, and so this course is designed to be very good preparation if you're going into statistics, computer science, data science, and still to be adequate if you end up changing your mind and going into physics. It relies much less heavily on details from Math 23a than 23b does, and therefore for those of you, particularly extension students, who didn't take 23A, this is likely to be the better choice. This year, I am removing some content, mostly about real analysis, that's in Math 23B, but not in Math 21B. But I'm still keeping my pledge to the applied math folks that if an important topic is covered in either Math 21A or 21B, someone who takes 23A and 23C will see it also. Real analysis is in the title of Math 23b, and indeed that builds heavily on the real analysis background that you will have got from Math 23a. I'm going to assume that you're pretty familiar with Cauchy sequences, uniform continuity, the bolzano weierstrass theorem, and I'm going to include somewhat esoteric topics like the oskaliard zola theorem and LeBay integrals. This is enough so that it would be pointless for you to take Math 112 afterwards. 23C has some real analysis in it, but it's not a major theme of the course, and it's not in the course title. I will do my best to accommodate well-prepared people who got their preparation somewhere other than from Math 23A, and I'm happy to make the, the materials from 23A available for review. Just send me an email. I'll add you as a guest. It does include a lot of topics on probability and computer science that are not in Math 23b, and indeed, a number of these are in no other course taught at the undergraduate level in the mathematics department. In 23b, there will be two well-identified proofs per week. You can do proof logging if you like. Last year, most people chose to do it. This will build on the experience from proofs you should have got from Math 23a. And I would say prior experience with proofs is pretty much essential for Math 23b. 
For Math 23C, on the other hand, I will identify a number of key proofs that anyone who claims to understand the mathematics underlying statistics and data science should know. Some of those may show up on quizzes, but we're not doing proof logging, and the proofs by and large don't rely heavily on the proofs from Math 23A. So while prior experience would be helpful, it's not essential for 23C. Here's the text of the resolution for the new quantitative reasoning with data requirement. This requirement ensures that students reach a level of quantitative facility involving, here are the keywords, mathematical, statistical, and, that's and, not or, computational methods that will enable them, etc. 23b does not meet this requirement. It's far too mathematical. It's got no computational aspect, and it does very little by way of statistics. In contrast, for Math 23C, my goal is to provide more thorough coverage of this requirement, covering mathematical, statistical, and computational than any other Harvard course. Last year, I asked people on the evaluation questionnaire how well it had done, and almost everyone strongly agreed it had done a good job in all three areas. If you go on and take a probability course like Statistics 110 or a data science course, you're likely to be much better prepared than your classmates, and a significant number of Math 23 students have been able to land summer jobs doing data analysis in R. Maybe you can also. There are a certain number of topics that are common to the two courses. Everyone has to learn about abstract vector spaces, and change of basis in a vector space, about determinants and how you can use them to define volumes in Rn, about multiple integrals and changing variables, about all the standard coordinate systems that are used both in physics and in data science, polar, cylindrical, and spherical coordinates, and about how to calculate volumes and manifolds, of which the special cases are the length of a curve or the area of a surface. But there are certain topics that only show up in 23b. Fancy real analysis, the concept of equicontinuity, and the wonderful oscillard zola theorem. Differential forms, which are the right way to do the mathematics underlying electromagnetic theory. Orientation of manifolds, a very difficult topic that's crucial if you want to do physics. And similarly, the derivatives that are important in physics. The exterior derivative, which for historical reasons applied, acquired in physics three different names, divergence, gradient, and curl, and Stokes's theorem, which is the generalization of the fundamental theorem of the calculus, and the appropriate ending to a course on multivariable calculus. What do you get if you take 23C? Well, I'm going to spend the first week covering logic, which is very important for computer science, but I'm going to do it in a very mathematical way using finite fields so that you don't have to learn lots of baggage from Boolean algebra. I'll cover the axiomatic basis of probability theory, which is a little too sophisticated mathematically to make it into most elementary probability courses. The awful things that can happen when you have to deal with uncountable sample spaces like the real numbers. Using uh, statistical methods to evaluate integrals, so-called Monte Carlo integration. Lots of the distribution functions beloved to statisticians, normal, gamma, beta, etc. Doing linear models with linear and multilinear regression and principal component analysis, and a lot of use of the R scripting language to analyze data and display it in an enlightening manner. The 23B lectures were captured on video some years ago. I made scans of my lecture notes. Kate Penner recorded many of her wonderful lecture preview videos. 
And if you took 23A, you'll recognize the style. There are fill-in-the-blank lecture notes, but my scans have filled in the blank with handwriting. If you're in 23B or E23B, you'll need to watch the first two videos before the first class, which for undergraduates will be noon on Friday of the first week of classes. In 23C, I've gone to a completely new style of lecture using R Markdown. I thought this was going to be easy. In fact, it's turned out to be a real time sink, but I'm sticking with it. So I have taken last year's lecture notes, replaced all the handwritten parts with either equations written in tech or with diagrams drawn in R. I haven't changed the content much, but the form of the lectures is completely new. I've also managed to build a lot of examples from R and some short, complete, self-contained applications in R. In order to live stream these lectures and take full advantage of the new format, I had to move the course into Northwest B108. So the lectures will be live streamed from there for extension students who happen to be free at 1.30 on Tuesday and Thursday afternoon. And they'll also be available on video. R Markdown claims it can capture everything in a single printable file. I'm still working to find the best way of doing this, but we'll come up with some sort of PDF that you can open in Adobe Acrobat or an HTML file you can open in your browser. In any event, you'll have the file that I used at lecture, so you can rerun on your own the slides for the entire lecture or through a table of contents individual slides. There are also two R script videos for each week. Those are going to be a little bit redundant with the new lectures, but I don't feel like revising and re-recording them. So you can watch the whole thing. And I think probably the best time to do this is after the lectures, which is why I slipped the section times to later in the week. If you prefer, you can watch last year's lecture videos from Math 23C. They cover the same content. They're in the same style as in Math 23A. And I think the scans of my lecture notes may actually turn out to be a better standalone reference document than anything you can print from the new lectures. No matter what, you want to watch the first two lecture videos and the corresponding R script videos before you attend the first section. For 23B, I have reserved a three-hour time block, noon to three. Uh, this has been moved into the newly renovated Harvard Hall. I'm assured that there are two very nice seminar rooms available to us. I'm planning to stop by this afternoon and find out. Because there are no live lectures, you have to attend class for two hours a week. For E23B, there will be one online section led by Chris Lokier with help from Raquel Ortiz. Uh, you are also invited to attend the on-campus section, preferably the one that meets from 1 to 3 rather than 12 to 2. And I especially recommend this for high school students who can get away from their school to attend class. It's nice before you start college to sit in a class every week with a bunch of college students and discuss mathematics. There's no attendance requirement for extension students. You can opt out of section entirely. Raquel Ortiz is accustomed to dealing with such people, holds plenty of online office hours, and will grade your homework for you. And the homework's going to be due on Tuesday evening. You should be able to have it done by then. For 23C, I'm going to follow up on my experimental idea of data work of workshops in R that I started in Math 23A last year, which people seem to like. So the first 45 minutes of section will be R workshop in a classroom with a video conferencing system. Build your lap, bring your laptop along. Students will successively take over the computer screen, and we will build some nice data analysis applications. 
And then for the end of section, 30 minutes if you've got to run off to another class, 45 if you don't. We'll have a problem solving workshop using whiteboards outside the seminar room in the Northwest building. That doesn't leave any time for seminar presentations, and without the sem seminar presentations, I can't see how to get proof logging launched. So I will do what I've traditionally done in my advanced courses. I will identify a handful of proofs as candidates for quizzes. Students can post samples of those proofs for their classmates to study, and I'll pick a couple at random and put them on every quiz. The times I have managed to snag for sections are uh, Thursday afternoon at 4.30. This will work for people who come to lecture. It'll give them a while after lecture to watch the R script videos. Friday at 10.30 in the morning. Took a swap with a Korean course to get that. And Monday morning, I've reserved 9 to 12, and I think I can break with Harvard rules and offer sections at 9, 10, or 11 a.m. For E23C, we will offer online sections at some of the times Friday evening, or perhaps earlier on Friday, as early as 5.30. Saturday morning, which seemed to work very well in 23A, and Sunday afternoon, which is fine now that football season is over. And we could have an on-campus option Thursday at 4.30 that um, extension students could attend. That seemed to work out very well last term for people who work as research assistants in Cambridge. And as usual, extension students can opt out of section entirely. Because the sections are running later, and because you've got these videos to watch after lecture, I'm slipping the homework due date back one day to Wednesday. Both courses will use the Hubbard and Hubbard textbook, which you will already own if you took 23A. For 23B, we will follow chapters 4 through 6 very closely. In 23C, we'll do selected topics from chapter 4, where the Hubbards introduce probability, and from chapter 5 on volumes of manifolds. And we will also cover some topics that there wasn't room for for chapter 3, notably the spectral theorem and the use of eigenvectors for face recognition. These are important for data analysis, and it seems a shame to have left them out at all. However, we will do absolutely nothing from Chapter 6 in Hubbard. Those of you in E23A and 23A last year became familiar with Ross's nice little real analysis book. We didn't cover integration. I will cover integration from Ross. And then I discovered to my delight that my favorite statistics book by Chihara and Hesterberg is available electronically via Hollis and I will make frequent reference to that. There are a significant number of topics in 23C for which there is no textbook. I'm not sure anyone has ever taught a course like this before, so that's not unreasonable. Use of R, 23B, absolutely not. If you don't like to program, this is the course for you. In 23C, on the other hand, there will be two R script videos to watch every week. There will be homework problems in R, plus a term project in data analysis that replaces the final exam. To get you started on the homework, there will be weekly R workshops. And if you did R in 23A, you didn't see the signature part of R, namely the statistical functions. But this term, we will focus on that. If you did 23A R scripts, that will be useful background, but it's not essential. You can start out with R from scratch in 23C. And I will have some extra so-called data wrangling problems. If there's a homework problem you don't want to do, you can just replace it with a data wrangling problem. For exams, I'm going to have two quizzes. If you want to take them online, the dates are March 7th and April 25th. The first one will cover the first five weeks, the second one the next five weeks. And same deal as last term, 
We're open for business 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. The only rule is you have to arrive before 8.30 and leave after, 8 after 10.30. So you can spend any amount of time from five minutes to five hours on the quiz. Online, you can take it between Friday and Sunday, and you'll have to find yourself a proctor who will sign an honor code statement. Because the two quizzes will cover so much of the material in 23B, the final exam will be rather short. The topics that will be focused on are topics from the last two or three weeks, but those drag in a lot of topics from earlier in the term. In 23C, the quizzes are on the same dates in the same location. I am going to have two or three short take-home quizzes on R, like the sort that I introduced in Math 23A. People tended to get perfect scores on them, but it reassured me that people were picking up on their R skills, and there's no final exam that will let you concentrate on your term project. And that's all I have to say about the format of these courses. If, having heard this information and read the syllabi, you're still puzzled about which course is right for me, just send an email to bamberg at tiac.net, and I will do my best to answer your question.